So India's Ministry of Information and Broadcasting last week withdrew a secretive draft of its broadcast bill, um, a move that many welcomed. And under this bill, uh, online streaming services, social media accounts, sharing news and entertainment up updates, and also online video creators from across the globe uh, would have come under the regulation of the Indian government. Uh, and you know, here's the thing, right? This bill would have significantly restricted speech online and in my opinion, it shouldn't have existed in the first place. But before I talk about what the mini what the bill specifically did, let's understand a little bit about what's going on right now. So Financial Express has reported, uh, citing unofficial government sources, that there won't be a fresh draft of this bill. There's no and that there's no plan for a broadcast bill because the IT rules are sufficient uh, when it comes to covering this bill. Now I'll talk about the IT rules in a bit. But first, let's understand uh, the current official situation, right? This Financial Express report has cited unnamed government sources, uh, whereas the official statement that's out on the government website and from a tweet by the ministry, uh, they said that they've extended the time for receiving comments and suggestions on the broadcast bill or the broadcast services regulation bill, as it is called, till October 15th this year. And they've said that a fresh legislation will be published after detailed consultations. Now, they haven't said that there'll be a public consultation, um, and that looks unlikely, uh, especially since given this current draft has been withdrawn, and the operational draft is from November 2023, which means that the bill is most likely going to be tabled in parliament without a pu public consultation, because in November 2023, they've already done a public consultation. Um, I don't think we can trust an unofficial government statement, um, uh, especially when there isn't an official statement stating otherwise. Um, and so we should just take it as the fact that this November 2023 draft holds and that there is probably going to be a broadcast bill unless the government withdraws it, right? But let's understand what the issue with the broadcast bill was and why were we against it. Um, key issues, right? Number one, it was treating online content creators as, as broadcasters. So if you earn money using social media, uh, if you're an influencer and you're marketing, or even if you're running a blog uh, that publishes content and you run Google ads on it, it could be treated as a systematic business activity. And then you would be treated like traditional news publishers or TV channels are under the broadcast bill. And this is like a fundamental misunderstanding of what it means to be an online creator, right? The in the internet is interactive and personal. It's not one way of, uh, in terms of broadcast. It treats you the same way. This bill treats you the same way as an online streaming services like Netflix or Amazon Prime would do in terms of regulation. Now, practically, what does that mean? It means that you would have to intimate the government about your existence. You know, you have to send them, like fill up a form or submit a form to them saying, these are my personal details, this is my bank account, this is my PAN number or some stuff like that. And, you know, what your, if you have an official company, then what the company addresses details, that would basically treat you like a, a regulated entity with the government. Secondly, and, and that regulated entity means that, you know, they uh, the government should have a mechanism for being able to contact you. Secondly, you would have to set up a complaints redressal mechanism where anyone can complain against you or against your file a complaint against your content, and you, you have to deal with that complaint within a designated period of time. Um, now, if you say the complaint, you reject the complaint, that complaint still has an opportunity to go to the next level, which you as a creator would have to join, uh, which was uh, which was a self-regulatory organization where other people like you would be signing up. And so uh, that complaint could then go, then go there and then there'd be like a retired judge or someone like that who would adjudicate on the complaints that they receive against you or your content. Now, if it gets rejected there as well, then there's a government body called a Broadcast Advisory Council that could look into complaints. So imagine the hassle of you having to go through all three of these levels, first a complaint being filed with you, then with a self-regulatory organization, then with the government, right? And this would be applicable both to entertainment content, like travel blogs, cooking blogs, uh, you know, the, any kind of online content creators, and also for news content. Uh, and there would be a programming and an advertising code for you to comply with, right? Uh, but if you're doing 
entertainment, right? If you're not doing news, uh, like this is a news analysis. If you're not doing news, then it gets even worse because if you're doing entertainment content like a travel blog, you would have actually have to set up and fund something like a content evaluation committee before your content goes live. And this committee would include representatives from like where the socioeconomic groups, SEST, uh, women and child welfare folks. And that will add another layer of complexity and cost to your, uh, to your content creation, right? They would have to approve and certify your content before it goes live. Imagine doing that for a travel vlog or, you know, even if you're just doing recording and, and you're publishing a video like I am, um, so, you know, uh, there would be in even in case of like experts sharing knowledge online, like a doctor discussing nutrition or a physiotherapist sharing some exercise, they would fall under this category. So they'll need to uh, basically adhere not just to a regulatory framework, but also need to set up a content evaluation committee like Nisha Madhulika would have to set up a content evaluation committee for her recipes, whether they, you know, offend certain categories of people or not. So one, it may generate employment for people in content evaluation, but for someone who's creating content, right? This is censorship through compliance. Like uh, there would be so much compliance that you need to do that you might think a hundred times before creating an online content channel or monetizing your channel. Uh, think about it, right? You never know whether your content will make money or not. But then uh, in many cases, there will be self-censorship because you don't want to risk making certain kinds of content. And this is already happening in streaming services where there are legal teams that end up censoring very edgy content, the shows that never make it out uh, live for us to view. There are movies that never get shown in India on streaming services. Um, it would make our content and our internet insipid and boring, just like Indian television is. You know, in Indian television, uh, there's so much of censorship. Even in Indian theater, I was watching uh, Deadpool versus Wolverine. And uh, there are there are abusive phrases which were just bleeped, but which were not audible. You know they're saying it, right? But also they're censored. They're like four stars or five six stars in the subtitles as well. Um, on television uh, in India, words like breast are censored. I mean, just a part of your anatomy of someone's anatomy, right? So it's it's ridiculous how much censorship that happens on traditional television under their content code similar content code would start applying on the internet even on streaming services but here in this case in case of this withdrawn broadcast bill it would have applied to um you know online content creators as well but there'd be censorship of another type um in terms of the fact that social media intermediaries which are social media platforms where you might be publishing your content they would have to, if you fail to provide your information to the government, then, you know, social media intermediaries would could be asked to provide that information about you uh, or any other information in case the government wants to know your IP address. Um, they would they could also be directed to censor content or through the social media intermediary. Um, and so, you know, this is basically they would become the gatekeepers. The government would direct them to censor your content. Um, and that puts a lot of burden on 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 them. Uh, they're already censoring so much, uh, so speech gets censored, right? Uh, the one of the bigger issues with this with this broadcast bill, which is now I'll repeat withdrawn, was and which is really ridiculous, is that the bill was worded in a manner uh, that it anyone in the world creating online content would would come under the ambit of that bill. So many of them would have to comply with it. So can you imagine Taylor Swift, for example, releasing songs uh, on Spotify uh, would have to effectively uh, could potentially be censored. Her videos on YouTube could potentially be censored because she hasn't created a content evaluation committee in India and they haven't certified it. Uh, Donald Trump tweets news content all the time. Can you say that this is a part of his systematic business activity? Um, and would he then be censored in India for it? You know, Mr. Beast, for example, uh, creating content, uh, you know, let's say giving millions of dollars away to someone or gifting them an island, etc., would have to run this through a content evaluation committee. Uh, but also online news uh, service providers, online news channels. There are, for example, ABC, from what I remember, streams on YouTube. So uh, would they need to then comply with a broadcast code or a programming and an advertising code in India? So look, most 
global creators may not be asked to comply. Maybe a Dhruv Rathi who's in Germany might be asked to comply, right? Um, and so this bill is going to be enforced arbitrarily or it was going to be enforced arbitrarily. It's now withdrawn. And that creates a problem. Um, another uh, sort of so that, that, you know, it doesn't apply to, it applies to everyone, but only they're going after some people that they want to go after. Uh, and and like I said, that's a problem to begin with. Um, advertising intermediaries such as Google AdSense or the Facebook audience network, or, you know, there are hundreds of ad networks across globally, Tairu, Tabula, uh, uh, Outbrain, that people use uh, on their websites to monetize their content. Um, those would also have to be, uh, they'll have to comply with an advertising code, which is not defined in this bill, uh, but it will be created subsequently is what it says. So there'll be rules for that, for the advertising code. Um, and so there will be further due diligence, uh, even uh, for or further things that advertising networks had, would have to do, which would reduce perhaps the quantum of advertising online in India. Um, in addition, there would be, they said that they could create further due diligence requirements for social media companies, which means that the scope of the regulation could expand. So, the scale at which this is happening, and here's the big problem, you know, that this bill treats online content like traditional cable TV, ignoring that digital media is interactive and privately consumed. By interactive, I mean, I if you look at Twitter space as an, as an example, anyone in the audience who's listening to that content can be converted into a speaker immediately and participate in it. Uh, Clubhouse did the exact same thing. On YouTube, you can uh, bring participants on uh, onto a discussion. Online content is not broadcast. It it is streamed and it is interactive and it's and and you know like you people interact with comments that are being made on their YouTube live streams as well. It's what people do specifically in case of memberships or subscription driven things where they have star uh, sort of uh, they have star sort of members who they prioritize comments from. And that's how some creators make money. All of this is going to have to be regulated. And the internet is, is not just broadcast. It's not like uh, flicking through a television channel and watching something that someone's decided that you'll watch it. It's interactive. So it's basically regulating interactivity at one level. Secondly, it's regulating what is being privately consumed. Um, we consume the internet on our private devices. It is one is to one, it's unicast. Every individual gets a unique stream, right? It's not broadcast. It's not like a theater where there are, uh, let's say, uh, hundreds of people watching something together. So effectively, this is an overreach into our personal digital spaces, trying to control what we view in the privacy of our homes. And effectively, this impacts our freedom to consume the content. And I'll validate this, right? Uh, there was a situation, I think maybe in 2016 uh, where, or 17, when there was a case in the Indian Supreme Court regarding porn. And in that, this was a Kamle Swaswani versus Union of India case. And in that... Um, the government, after a lot of criticism, because it had created a list of porn sites that ought to be banned in the country, uh, actually went back and told the Supreme Court that they don't want to regulate private viewing. They don't want to get into someone's bedroom and control what they're viewing on their personal devices. Um, and so, you know, uh, effectively, is what we view in the privacy of our homes. And they said they don't want to do model policing. But then what this bill does, what this broadcast bill does, is that it's, the regulation is so heavy, it's so cumbersome, that it'll it'll basically lead to compliance as a form of censorship. Um, and, you know, the heavy regulations will stifle innovation in content, stifle free speech, prevent people from pushing the boundaries of content. Uh, and in terms of the pushing of boundaries of content, I remember um, from the 1990s, there was a song that became very... Uh, controversial and there were mobs out on the street protesting the song. It was a song that went like, sexy, 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 mujhe log bole. The word sexy was not seen deemed kosher at that point in time. And that song was actually edited after this controversy and made it baby, 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 mujhe log bole. Now think about it, right? We have moved on from that as a society. The word sexy is no longer uh, like uh, unacceptable in in creation, in content, in 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 television and cinema, uh, so we've evolved and and progressed as a society from there. What this bill does is, is effectively, it restricts that 
creative tendency to push the boundaries and allow us to uh, view more types of content. Like I watched Mizapur recently, season three, and Mizapur, the kind of language that's there, uh, I don't want kids watching it, right? And there are restrictions that one can put it, and it's there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of uh, uh, the, the, the content is meant for adults, right? Uh, but the problem is that this bill doesn't allow adults be adults. They now don't allow us to watch grown-up content, right? That it is an absolutely brilliant series, but it wouldn't. I'm wondering whether if this bill came into play, would it make it to screens now? Um, because this entire this vague criteria, the the kind of uh, control that the government is exerting, basically in, introduces uncertainty. Um, it also creates like an uneven playing field where global creators can create more edgy content, but we in India can't. Um, and even with the arbitrary enforcement, it's going to have the same problem. So the broadcast bill in its current form poses a significant threat to digital freedom and creativity. And we, I'm glad it's been withdrawn uh, in its current form, but we don't know what's going to come next. Um, so Here's my thought process on it. What is going to come next? Uh, and this is where the IT rules uh, come in. Now, under the IT rules, um, which have had actually, which was passed in 2021, but have had like more and more provisions added to them with about four or five amendments over the past few years, there's already a mechanism for regulating streaming services um, and online services, right? So, um, uh, there, and online news. So now the problem for the government of India is that these rules are being challenged in court, uh, with the DigiPub is DNPA live law, they've all gone to court to challenge these rules. And one of the arguments being made in some of the cases is that these rules uh, that are under the IT Act's due diligence provisions, uh, they create an entire regulatory structure for two domains digital news publishers and online streaming. Of course, the, these cases are only by news entities, so they focus only on news. But the fact is that rules cannot do what the act doesn't allow. And my sense is, um, you know, that the government is trying to legitimize the IT rules via this bill, because there is a clause uh, in this bill where they've said that the that the provisions, uh, that certain provisions, you know, um, in the withdrawn bill, that certain provisions of the IT rules, which relate to the entities covered under this withdrawn bill, should be seen as applicable under the same bill. So I expect that in the final version, because the ministry is in court defending the IT rules, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology is in court defending uh, the IT rules, uh, they will pass a broadcast bill that will limit the scope to online news and streaming services uh, because they need to validate the IT rules and all the subsequent versions that are being challenged and as not being backed by law. And they'll incorporate provisions from the Cable Networks Television Act because this bill is supposed to replace it. Um, the advertising industry is also likely to be covered because one, the advertising industry has been silent in its response, but also like under the allocation of business rules recently, uh, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting was given the mandate to regulate online advertising. And in fact, following a court, a separate court case against Patanjali by the Supreme Court, uh, and a direction from the Supreme Court, the ministry actually created a provision, uh, created a set of regulations where the uh, where advertisers would have to file ads with the ministry um, or file details of ads that they're publishing online with the ministry. So they want the 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 power under an act or a, or a law to regulate ad online advertising. Um, so that's likely to come as well. Uh, the tricky part for the ministry relates to covering online influencers and social media users. Um, there are already online influencer guidelines, um, but the withdrawal of this bill is likely is largely owed to the backlash uh, to their backlash against this bill. Right. Um, importantly, I expect the applicability of this bill to be restricted to Indian citizens because there has been backlash regarding the global applicability uh, of the secret draft, which is, like I said, unenforceable, unfeasible, uh, arbitrary to begin with. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Indian citizens won't get affected. Um, I just think that there should be another consultation given the scale and the scope of the impact on our fundamental rights. But if this Financial Express news is, is true, that there is no plan for the broadcast bill anymore, 
um, and that the bill has been withdrawn in its entirety, which is also a demand, uh, you know, from various stakeholders, including me, uh, over the last few weeks. Um, then, then that is welcome. The ministry should withdraw this bill, but it doesn't mean. And you know, there's some talk about the Digital India Act uh, uh, being brought in uh, to cover some of these aspects. It doesn't mean that they bring the same clauses under a new bill and just junk the idea of a broadcast bill per se. The fact is that these clauses shouldn't be there because they adversely impact our freedoms um, as citizens of India.